All right, so um, I want to do some problem solving with you and we're going to focus on sequences and series. So the first question is just to get our little brains warmed up. And then after that, we're going to jump into some slightly more difficult questions. OK, so the first question says to us, the sum to infinity of a convergent geometric series is 13,5. The sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards is 1 comma 5. If r is positive, so if r is greater than 0, determine the value of r. Okay. So what we've got to do when we're problem solving is we've got to find a place to start, right? So we've got to somehow link the information that we are given to a formula and we've got a substitute right so what would we do with the sum to infinity of a convergent geometric series is 13 comma 5 what would we do with that how could i write that in a way that was useful in a formula Any ideas? <clears throat> In a fraction. Okay, so Tundo, think about your sum to infinity formula. Your sum to infinity formula is A over one minus R, right? So what would you do with that 13 comma five? Cometrics, I can't tell you all the answers. You guys have got to have got to think and try these questions for yourselves. Otherwise, you never develop the skills that you need. Okay, make the equation to equal to 13, comma 5. Yes, Chloe, Shante, Mithlali, good. Absolutely. Well done. Okay, so we're going to take 13, comma 5, sub it in place of sum to infinity, and that would be equal to A over one minus r. Now, remember they want us to calculate the value of r, right? So if they want us to calculate the value of r, and we've got this equation over here, in order to calculate r, we would also need the value of a. However, they've given us a further piece of information. They've said the sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards is one comma five. Okay, so you want to use a simultaneous solution. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Okay. Yes, the third term is a r squared. That's right. A is the first term. So a is the first term. A r is the second term. A r cubed is the third term. But careful here, they're not saying that the value of the third term is 1 comma 5. They're saying the sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards is 1 comma 5. What does that mean? What does that mean? You've got to kind of got to get a little bit creative here. Yes, Zadalia, this is a level four type question. All right. The first bit of it, so the sum to infinity of a convergent geometric series is 13 comma 5. That's not difficult. What's difficult is what to do with the green bit. Okay. So here we've got to start getting creative. So we would have the fourth term, sorry, that's supposed to be squared, fourth term plus, and the sum continues, all right, all the way to infinity. All right, so they are telling us the sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards. So here is the third term. So from this point onwards to 
infinity, the sum of that is 1, 5. What does that mean based on the information that we've already got? Chloe, go for it. Hi, ma'am. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. I can hear you just fine. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yes, cool. Go for it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try. So does it. it not mean that if you subtract 1,5 from 13,5, it's going to give you A plus A or? Beautiful, Chloe. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Okay, so that's exactly it. Okay, that's exactly it. You've got to think about the information that they've given you. What does this mean? Okay, that's really nice, Chloe. Well done. All right, so if you take 13, 5 and you subtract 1, 5, that gives you A plus AR. Lovely. Okay, well done on figuring out that difficult part of the green and what it means, Chloe. Right, so here we go, Matrix. There is equation number one. Here is your equation number two. Okay, do you think that you can solve the rest of this by yourselves or do you want... I think you can solve the rest of this on your own. Let's just see what you guys do because it was making the equations that was the hard part here. Solving them simultaneously theoretically should not be difficult after we've got them. So let me give you an opportunity to do that. Okay, so please solve for R. Thank you, Matrix. Got any questions? Please ask you, Linda and I. So I'll be interested to see what your value for R is. When you get one, please just let us know when you're done. Cool, Pinga. OK. 
okay and Kanisa is also done. Tanda, I suppose it I suppose it would, but you don't need to worry about that. Considering that the third term becomes A for the second part, it's not going to help you solve the problem. Okay. It's, sorry, Tanda, I only just saw your your question now. Pinga and Nkaniso, if you are done, you're welcome to try question six. Don't worry about question six unless you're done. Yes, Pinga. I didn't end up with a powerful in my answer. Oh, to a power of three. Okay. Pinga, direct message me so that not everybody sees. And in can you so you can also direct message me and just tell me what you got as your value of R. But do it by direct message so that not everybody can see. Well done, Penga. Well done, and can you? So that's right. Okay, cool. So both of you are correct. Good job. So you can try question number six in the meantime, just while we're waiting for everybody else. And then at least you guys are still busy. <clears throat> when they say find the sequence, it means find the first three terms. Don't worry about question six. Just concentrate on question 18 for now, guys. I'm just giving question six to Penga and can you? So who are finished early. Okay, so Zedalia, cool, that's great. Just DM me as well, Zedalia, and tell me what you got for R. Okay, and your R value, Zedalia, please. Again, just DM me, thank you. Okay, good, and Lefatso is also done. Okay, so Zedalia, thank you for DMing me. R had to be positive. Remember, it says at the bottom if R is greater than zero. So just go back and just have a look at your answer again. Well done, Intlafatso. Yes, good. You're on the right track there. Yelena, just give me one second. My kitty is. Um, Yes, Katleho, you're That's on the right fine. track. Just don't, just don't write it as a as a decimal. <laughs> just give me one second. I'll be right back. That's okay. Let's go, guys. 
Let's go, we can do this. Sorry, otherwise he sits outside and he meows and meows and meows and then everyone gets irritated with him. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so Zedalia, just be careful. Just always make sure that you go back and read the question again um, to check whether your answer fits in with what it is that they gave us. All right, so a lot of you, well, not a lot of you, but of the ones that have messaged, there we go. Okay, so Trish. I'm afraid that's not correct, Trish. Sorry, but it's cool. We're going to do it together anyway. I'm just going to wait another couple of minutes and then we can go through the answer. That's it. Uh, I hope I'm saying this correctly, Ruth. Good. Well done, Ruth. Good job. Nice. That's it, Cutler Hall. Good job. Okay, so the easiest way to have then done this matrix. Okay, well done to those of you that sent answers through, that's great, is you would have taken one and a half away from 13 and a half, and you would have ended up with 12. Then you can take A out as the highest common factor, and you'd have one plus R. And then the best thing to do here is make A the subject to the formula. So A would be equal to 12 over one plus r. Now, the reason why it's good to make a the subject is the of the formula is because you now want to go and sub back into the other equation. So you have your 13 comma 5 is equal to a in terms of r would be 12 over 1 plus r. And all of this is over 1 minus r. And this is when it starts to become a little bit more difficult. Okay. Remember just the maths, the, 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 the technicalities. Remember, this is 13, 5 over 1. So you can cross multiply. So you'd end up with your 13, 5 multiplied by 1 minus r. And that would be equal to 12 over 1 plus r. After you've done that, you can expand your brackets and get 13 comma 5 minus 13 comma 5 R is equal to 12 over 1 plus R. And then the easiest thing for you to do matrix is multiply every term in the equation by 1 plus R. So you'd end up with 13 comma 5 times 1 plus R. Uh, sorry, not equals, that's supposed to be a minus. 13 comma 5 r multiplied by 1 plus r would be equal to 12. Okay, and then we can remove our brackets and continue to solve for r. So that would give us 13 comma 5 plus 13 comma 5 r minus 13 comma 5 r minus 13 comma 5 r squared is equal to 12. And these two middle terms would add up to zero. You would be left with um, minus 13 comma five R squared on this side. And then when you took this over to the other side, you'd end up with your one comma five. When you divide both sides by negative 13, um, uh, comma five, you'd end up with r squared is equal to one over nine. You can also collect both terms one side, and then you'd end up with r squared minus one over nine equals zero. That's also okay. So the next step now would be to factorize if you did it this way. So this would be r minus one over three, r plus one over three equals zero. So either r would be equal to 
1 over 3 or r would be equal to negative 1 over 3, but they told us that r has to be positive. Or if you do continue to do it this way, r would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over 9. Okay, but we have decided, or we were told rather, that r was positive, so that's why we would choose 1 over 3. Okay, so I'm just going to go back up in case you need to take screenshots. That's what you would have done. Are there any questions? <coughs> Go for it, Katleho. Now you'll have to on your side because we cannot hear anything if you are talking. Yeah, oh, sorry, it is. It's minus one, comma five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's a minus there. Sorry, I left the minus off. You're quite right. Okay, but then when you divide it by negative on both sides, you'd end up with a positive. Thanks, Katleho. You're quite right. Any other questions? Are we all good, Matrix? Kamachelo? Hi, ma'am. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. That's good. Um, could you please explain to me how you got the second equation? The 13 comma 5 minus 1 comma 5 equals a plus a r. Yes, please. Sure. Okay, so that really was the key to being able to do this question. The solving simultaneously and the rest of it is just all the the technicalities, right? So I don't know if you remember, um, Chloe explained to us how she did this, all right? So the idea is this, let me try and actually, it doesn't matter, okay? The sum to infinity is 13 comma five. So here all the way to 30 is, 13 comma 5. Then the sum to infinity from the third term onwards. So the third term is AR squared plus AR cubed would be the fourth term, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That has a value of 1.5. So the difference between these two has to be the sum of the first two terms. So the sum to infinity is everything. And the sum from the third term onwards is 1 comma 5. The difference between those two numbers has to be the sum of the first two terms. Right, does that make okay. sense? Does that make sense to you now? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's why A plus AR term 1 plus term 2 is the difference between 13 comma 5 and 1 comma 5. All right, thank you. Okay. No problem. All right. And then you would have to go and solve simultaneously. All right. So now I see I'm being an absolute muhu today. Um, let me just copy this. And come across. All right. So what I'd like to do is this question with you guys. Right, so this is something that's a little bit more unusual. It tells us a convergent geometric series consisting of only positive terms has first term A, constant ratio R, and the nth term Tn such that, so here they give us n starts at 3, sum to infinity, Tn equals a quarter, right? This is very unusual. We don't see stuff like this very often probably not in many textbooks. What does that mean? What are they trying to tell us by that piece of information? Okay, so some of, all right, fair enough. So, 
So exactly, so sigma notation, sum of, and then they've given us Tn is equal to one over four. What does this mean? If I wanted to write this out in words, what would I say? Okay, Katlech, you're getting a little bit closer. So the sum to infinity. On term three is one over four. So from the third term onwards to infinity, the sum is going to be one over four. That's what that means. Sum to infinity from term three is equal to a quarter. All right, it's quite an unusual way of putting things. All right, so being able to understand what that means is critical to us being able to do this question. The first part, 3.1, is a bit easier, but 3.2 is a little bit more difficult. So they say to us in 3.1, if term one plus term two is two, write down an expression for A in terms of R. So which letter do they want us to make the subject? Which letter must we make the subject? If we have to write an expression for A in terms of R, must A be the subject or must R be the subject? Yes, good, well done. So A needs to be the subject. Okay, so what would you guys do here? A needs to be the subject, quite right. So what would you do? Ah, Pinga. Does that mean term, no, it does not mean term three is a quarter, that the sum to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter, okay? Term three is not a quarter, okay? So very important, okay? The sum from the third term onwards, to infinity is a quarter. That's what it means. Okay. I'm glad you, you asked again, Pinga, because I was wondering if that meant, okay. But how would we work with this? If term one plus term two, they want us to write an expression for A in terms of R. So they want us to make A the subject of the formula and we have to have, it in terms of R over here. So how would we write, no Sahawu, it's to test whether you actually understand what things mean. Okay, can you read something and interpret it correctly? Okay, so for example, when we were doing that question above, the reason that they told you that the sum to infinity from the third term onwards was one over five and that the sum to infinity was 13 comma five is they wanted you to be able to interpret that the sum of term one and term two was the difference between the two. So this is this is quite a similar question, right? But this is from an exam paper. That other one was out of a textbook. So how would we write term one in terms of A's and R's, what would term one be? Term one is always? Term one is always? A. Quite right. What's term two? Good, term two is? A R. So in other words, A plus A R is two. That's what they want us to do in question 3.1. And then they want us to make A the subject of the formula. So we would have to factorize. That would give us one plus R is equal to two. And now we would have to divide by the bracket on both sides. 
So we would end up with 2 over 1 plus r. Now we have written down an expression for a in terms of r. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, it's only out of two marks that. So there would be a mark for this and then a mark for your answer. I don't understand, C. Claire. What do you not understand here? <clears throat> Is it Dahlia? Hi, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask, isn't it in the term of R? So wouldn't R be the subject? No. So no. no. So when they say write no. down an so expression for A in, in terms of R, um, they want you to make A the subject of the of the um, formula, and then in terms of R means A is equal to R is now in part of your formula. Okay, so you're going to need okay, that so in order to be able to answer the next part. Oh, okay. I see. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, no problem. So it's 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 like this. If I give you a right angle triangle and I say to you that this angle over here is theta, what is the size of this angle over here in terms of theta? You would say 90 minus theta. Okay, so I'm making this angle the subject to the formula. Let's say this is angle C. So angle C would be equal to 90 minus theta. Okay. All right. So I see, is it C clear? Okay. C clear, go for it. Pleasure, Zetalia. C clear, what was your question? Um, hi, ma'am. I don't know hi. if you can hear me. I can not. hear um, you. Um, can you please rewind to the T1 that is equals to A, please, for me, please? All right. So when you are talking about geometric series, all right, term one is always written as A. And so because R is your constant ratio, term two will always be written as AR, A times R. So term three is going to be written as AR squared. Because remember, the nth term for any geometric pattern is AR to the N minus one. Does that make sense to you? Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Very okay. Much. All right. No problem. So then that's geometric. If you're talking about an arithmetic sequence or series, term one is also A, but term two is A plus D. And term three would be equal to A plus 2D. Okay, so starting to ring a bell. And that's why the nth term is Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. There's always one less N. Okay, in terms of your differences. Okay, so if it's term three, there are two differences. In term two, there is one difference. Okay, so that would be if it was arithmetic. But this is geometric. Okay, now comes the more difficult part. In 3.2, they want us to calculate the values of A and R. Okay, so they've given us, or we've created essentially one equation that we're going to need. So if they tell us to solve for A and R, we're gonna to have to do it simultaneously. And we've already got equation number one. We know that A is equal to two over one plus R. So now we need to go back and look at the information again, and we've got to make another equation. So let's see if we can use this information. The sum to infinity from the third term onwards is four. You know that the sum of the first two terms is two. So do you know the total sum to infinity? Do you know the total sum to infinity? We can do this matrix. We can do it. Okay. So see how will the sum 
to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter. The sum of term one and term two is two. So do you know the total sum to infinity? It's not a quarter, okay? Because from the third term onwards, it's a quarter. Do you know the total sum to infinity matrix? If so, what is it? What is the total sum to infinity? Anyone got any ideas? Yes, we do. Okay, so Lissetti, what is its value? What is the sum to infinity value for this particular question? There we go. Well done, Tlogi. Okay, so Tlogi's got nine over four. Where does that come from? It comes from adding two to a quarter. Remember, the sum of the first two terms is two. The sum to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter. So two plus a quarter is the total sum to infinity. Okay, so that's why our total sum to infinity is going to be two and a quarter, which is where the nine over four comes from. Okay, so we can make another equation using sum to infinity. Sum to infinity is nine over four, and that is equal to a over one minus r. There is our second equation. All right, now we need to solve simultaneously for A and R. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you know where I got the nine over four from? Are there any questions? Because I'm gonna let you solve simultaneously now for A and R. Any questions on where the nine over four comes from? Guys, anyone, are you guys fine? Are you ready? Only Tongi said nine over four. So I suspect that Tongi got it right. But all of you, are you still okay? Hilary says no. Who's talking? Oh, Hilary says it's okay. 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 Perfect. All right, Hilary. Okay. So if you don't understand where the nine over four comes from, I'm more than happy to explain it to you again. If you do, then please go ahead and solve simultaneously for A and R. Okay. <clears throat> Ronelwe, I think I have pronounced your name correctly. You don't understand. Okay, so they told us that the sum of the first two terms was two. So this over here is term one plus term two. They've told us the sum to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter, okay? So from here, from term three to, to infinity is equal to a quarter. So if you add these two numbers together, that's the total sum to infinity, the sum of the first two terms and the sum from the third term onwards. Okay, if you add those two together, that's your total sum to infinity in this question.
Yeah, that's all you had to do was just add. Okay, the sum of the first two terms is two. The sum to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter. So the total sum to infinity must be two plus a quarter. Two plus a quarter is nine over four. You're starting to understand now. Oh, good, Pinga. Okay, it's it's actually it's it's so easy, but at the same time, it's so difficult. Okay, it all hinges on understanding what I've highlighted in pink there. Okay, so the sum to infinity from the third term onwards is a quarter. So if the sum of the first two terms is two, your total sum to infinity is two plus a quarter. Okay. Cool, Zadalia, well done. Tell you what, uh, DM me so I can see what your answers are, please, Zadalia. Thank you. Yes, Katlia, oh, that's right. Good, well done. Okay, Sihawu, you're on the right track, okay? Okay, so Zadalia, your R is correct. Just check your A value. PC, yes, that's correct. Okay, so now this is no fault of your own. Unfortunately, because you guys, that's it, Zadalia, well done. Okay, so I'm just going to go back up a little bit here, guys. Remember, it said it consists only of positive terms. Okay, but this is not your fault. 
because obviously I move the screen up and down. It's not like an exam paper that you've got in front of you. So only positive terms. Okay, good job. Well done, everybody. The answers that you're sending me are correct. Okay, so what that means is that when it comes to your solving simultaneously, your skills are very good. What we need to work on and what I'm trying to help you with is the actual problem solving. Okay, so taking the information, thinking it through, deciding what it means, and then being able to form your equations. Okay, once you've done that, that's the hard part done. Okay, you just have to, <laughs> that's okay, CK. Um, so this is, that's why we're doing these problem solving questions is to help you develop those, those skills. Right, but well done. I know you all know how to solve simultaneously. So that's really positive to see. I'm just going to do this quickly on the side for anybody who hasn't managed. If you, let's just grab this one. I'm just going to bring this down here. If you have finished this question and you've sent me your answers and I've said it's cool, you're welcome to carry on working on this question over here, right? just so that you're not sitting there with nothing to do. It's not going to be that difficult after this one, but let's just see how it goes. All right, so if you are done, you're welcome to give question six a try. I'm going to work <clears throat> through question 3.2 and just show those of us that are struggling um, how we would solve simultaneously. Okay, so you've already got A in terms of R. So the easiest thing for you to do here, Matrix, is to go and sub in. So we want to take this over here and go and sub it in in place of A, right? So that would give us 9 over 4 equals 2 over 1 plus R all over 1 minus r. Okay, so this is the numerator, the 2 over 1 plus r, and 1 minus r is the denominator. So we're going to cross multiply. So this is going to give us 9 times 1 minus r, and then when we multiply fractions, remember we multiply numerators. So, so we'd say 4 times 2, which gives us 8 over 1 plus r is actually very, very similar to the previous question. Removing our brackets, we would end up with 9 minus 9r nine is equal to 8 over 1 plus r. And again, we can multiply every term in the equation by the denominator. Let's just move this guide down a little bit. OK. So that means we would have 9 times 1 plus r minus 9r times 1 plus r equals 8. Now multiplied everything by 1 plus r. So that would give us 9 plus 9r minus 9r, which is very similar to the previous question, minus 9r squared is equal to 8. So if you do want to collect everything on one side, you would end up with minus 9r squared. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the two middle terms would cancel out. They would add up to zero. And then 9 minus 8 would be plus 1. So this would be plus 1 equals 0. OK, so. Dividing through by negative 9, we would end up with r squared minus 1 over 9 equals 0. And again, we've got the same situation where we can factorize. And r would be equal to 1 over 3, or r would be equal to negative 1 over 3. So they told us we only had positive terms. So we would accept 1 over 3, we would reject minus 1 over 3, and then we would need to sub back into what A was equal to in our first equation. Okay, so if you recall, A was equal to 2 over 1 plus R. So R, we've accepted 1 over 3. So that would give us 2 over um, 
one plus a third would be four thirds. And if we take a and, uh, sorry, two and divide it by four over three, that would give us three over two as our final answer. Okay, so that means that A equals three over two and R equals one over three. Okay, this was out of six marks. So there has to be a mark for A, there has to be a mark for R. There's probably a mark on this line over here for accepting one over three and rejecting minus one over three. Um, they always mark factors or often mark factors. Uh, where else would we get a mark? Okay, so we would have to have a mark for the nine over four, a mark for subbing in. So that's what, one, two, three, four, five. And then possibly here, a mark on um, standard form. Okay. Yes, so Pinga, it is possible for R to have two values. And yes, because they've told us in the beginning that they were only positive terms, it means that our R can't be negative. Okay, because then we would end up with some negative answers as well. Okay, so Yulinda's jumping in there, guys, and doing the poll quickly. Yes, Pinga, quite right. So if they didn't specify, then both would be applicable. Okay, R could either be a third or it could be a negative third, in which case there'd be two different answers for A, right? Because A would be different if R was third compared to if it was a negative third. Okay, but they didn't want you to work with a negative R value. They only wanted you to work with a positive one. So excuse me yawning, I've had one heck of a day. <laughs> We are nearly there. We are nearly there. <laughs> yeah. That will be over soon. <laughs> yeah. I'm going straight to the shower and then into bed. <laughs> I promise you I'm going to be yeah. asleep by by seven tonight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Stop. in Caniso, sorry, let's just, um, okay. In Caniso, the answer for this question over here. Okay, so what you were supposed to do here in Caniso was this, all right? The second term is minus two over three. So you would have written AR equals minus two over three. The sum to infinity of the sequence is three over five. So you would have said three over five equals A over one minus R. Okay, so you would need to make um, something the subject right, either A or R. When they say find the sequence, they want term one. It's a very badly phrased thing. They want term one, they want term two, and they want term three. So in other words, they want A, AR, and AR squared. Okay, so if we make A the subject to the formula, we would have to divide both sides by R. So that would give us minus two over three divided by R, and then we can tip in times just so that we don't have to work with a uh, a complex fraction. So that would give us minus two over three times one over R. So that would be minus two over three R. Okay, and then we can take this and go and substitute it in here. All right, so you've got three over five is equal to minus two over three R all over one minus R. Again, cross multiply, so that'll give you three minus three R is equal to negative 10 over three R. And then you would have to multiply every term in the equation by three R. So that would give you nine R. This would give you nine R squared minus, sorry, equals negative 10. So negative nine R squared plus nine R plus 10 equals zero. Um, divide through by negative one. So you'd have nine R squared 
minus 9r minus 10 equals 0. And then factorizing, um, I'm going to do that. And then I think we would go with 5 and 2. Um, so if I put 5 here and 2 there, that would give us negative 15 plus 6 to give us the minus 9 in the middle. So r would be equal to negative 2 over 3, or r would be equal to 5 over 3. Okay, so there was no restriction on this particular question in Caniso. No. Um, Katleho, are we done with all the topics or didn't? No, we did this in the beginning of the year. I'm just going back and I'm doing slightly more difficult questions now in terms of our revision. Okay. So <clears throat> you would have had A is equal to negative 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. That would be negative. Or A would be equal to negative 2 over 3 times 5 over 3. All right, so that means A over here would be equal to 1. Here A would be equal to minus 2 over 5. Okay, and can you so you got the same answers? Okay. Um, don't stress, this was a bit of an extension question. I didn't expect everybody to be able to do this. It's this question over here, number six. Okay, if you do want to come and watch the video again, or ask the Toby wizard. All right, then you can try this question over here. Um, all right, and then you would have had to yeah, work out the value of the first three terms. So it would have been A, A, R, A, R squared. Okay, and can you so using both of them? Okay. Um, oh, there was another question. Now, hang on a second. So, Pinga, did they specify the sum to infinity to six? In, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. They told you that the sum to infinity of the sequence was three over five. Okay. Um, so five over three isn't applicable because of the sum to infinity. I don't know where you're getting the five over three from. So you are, you can have a sum to infinity of five over three. There's no reason for that. Yeah, I think you're getting confused with what R would be. Okay, R can only be between minus one and one for sum to infinity, but there's no restriction on the value of the sum to infinity itself. Okay. All right, so in Kanisa, I hope you got the same answers as me, but that's very quickly how you would have done that question over there. Okay, guys, that's it for now.